for having us. It's a uh, tremendous honor. Oh, of course. You know, I was asking Matt about, you know, what it's like here to be, you know, the Simpsons crew at the Tribeca Film Festival. It's crazy. I feel like, are you sure you knew it was us? I don't know. I mean, you guys are, you, you're an iconic film festival now. You, you bring so many creators together. You find new works. You hail... Um, veterans starting new works as well it is just and so for us to be a part of this festival is really really something it's it's an it's a a significant feather at our cap well let's go back 30 years or so okay when you first met lisa <laughs> okay what was it about lisa and her character that drew you to the project i don't think it was that um calculated i you know they uh, my agent said uh I want you to go and read for this voiceover. Voiceover had never been part of my plan for world domination. I was like, I don't know, all right, whatever. As long as it doesn't keep me from, from my plan for world domination. And uh, and when I read for Lisa, it was really, I, she really was just a foil for Bart. She wasn't this beautiful, fleshed out, multifaceted, brilliant, really one of the most complex female characters across all mediums that we have now. Um, and she grew to be that and so but I will say whenever I say yes to something my mantra is um, my job is the same so whether or not the job is big or small I said I would give you hundred and ten percent and that's what I do so as the character grew I really 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 obviously started to fall in love with her and even if the character had stayed small my job is the same well, let me ask you this. You know, 30 years ago, doing an animated show like this was it was taking a big risk. Um, I guess I didn't see it that way. Although I did hear after the fact that all the other networks were saying to Fox, you're out of your mind, you can't put an animated show on in prime time, it hasn't been done since the Flintstones, you're stupid. And then The Simpsons went to half hour and we hit so big and everybody said, oh my god, we knew it, we knew it. For us as actors, we were like, hooray, we're going to half hour, woo, 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 spin off. Like that never happens in show business. So um, I was unconcerned that this was a gamble. Behind the scenes that I've heard from the writers, you know, they were all told, Told, don't worry I know nobody wants to take this job nobody's ever gonna see the show it's not a problem there'll be six episodes and then you'll be done you'll be on your way so all of those stories are really funny and fun to hear that wasn't part of my um, wasn't part of the dialogue in my head well, the Simpsons are the world's most enduring family indeed and so <laughs> can you just give me um, give me a couple anecdotes about Lisa um, well, every time they give Lisa Simpson something, 22 minutes later, they've taken it away. This girl has more resilience than anyone I've ever known. Um, I always say when I grow up, I hope I'm a lot like Lisa Simpson. She uh, has an incredible, fantastic, wicked sense of humor. And Lisa Simpson is most successful no matter how smart she is, no matter what soapbox you put her in, is if you always remember that she's eight years old. And if you don't remember that, then she just really becomes this sort of insufferable little mouthpiece that is really precocious and is always trying to teach you something. If she doesn't laugh hysterically and almost want to pee herself when she's watching Itchy and Scratchy, then we've lost. She's one of the most beautiful, brilliant characters I've ever played in my 37 years in showbiz. Do you mind just because I took the mic down, if you could say she's one of the most wonderful characters oh, again? Yeah, she's one of the most beautiful, brilliant, multifaceted characters I've ever played in my 37 years in show business. I am so deeply honored to be part of her heart and mind.